miracles that they've thought they've seen will be small compared to what I got in store. We'll see arms and legs start to grow back. We'll see generations of addictions broken and fail and the change will no longer be there. We'll experience witches and warlocks walking through that door, walking down to this altar and surrendering to the one God Almighty. So I ask you this morning, do you want to be his body? It's costly. It costs you everything. But the reward is worth it.
begin to thank you for all he's currently doing in your life. Just begin to thank you for all he's already done in your life. Just begin to thank him for all he's going to do in your life.
high and lifted up. But he also, he also has this white horse that is ready. He is ready and he is steady. And he's ready to go. He's ready to go at any moment of the Father's birth. Yes. That beautiful white horse is ready to go.
clothed in brilliance and glory. Yes. My mom was driving down a street called Ray. Ray Drive. Light. She sees this house on the corner of Ray and Marianne. And she said, she, te she called or texted me and she said, Luke, I think, I think this is your house. And that became my house. So, but Thousand Oaks is right down the street. And two months after, after she died, God brought me here to Great Oaks.
at 14 years old through a girl named Bethany. That spirit of rejection caused me to go down the road of lust, of pornography. A spirit of pornography came in. For 24, 25 years, I've dealt with that spirit. But he said, Bethany always represents worship. That girl wasn't, she was flawed. She wasn't representing the Lord. But God got my attention because that was supposed to be a representation of good, of worship. But the enemy did something, and I canceled that assignment in Jesus' name. <laughs> On Halloween night, yes. this church was in here worshiping the Lord. Like every church in this nation should be doing on that night. No, no condemnation, just revelation. One of, one of my favorite uh, pastor mentors, he's with the Lord too. In fact, he passed away right after Gabrielle. Gabrielle, a month later, Pastor Eddie went to be with the Lord. An anointed, mighty man of God. I, I don't know if I just moved in, a, in an apostolic anointing. He was not just a pastor. He was an ap he had an apostolic anointing. Yes. He had a heart for Montgomery and the entire river region. And one thing he almost always said, no condemnation, just revelation. And I felt the power of God on Halloween night. I don't even know if we need, I don't know. And Pastor Jason and I were talking and we've been talking and I've always been open and honest, I've always, well, ever since the, in fact, ever since the Lord, the fear of the Lord came over me in college. With my college roommate and best friend, he'll always be one of my best friends. The fear of the Lord came over us in that college dorm room. And for the first time, for the first time, I felt the fear of God. I was in that little bunk bed. We had bunk beds and Bryce, my friend, he said, Luke, I feel this dark spirit around the computer. And I'm telling you, the fear of God came all over me in that Hallelujah. And I tried to deny it at first. I was afraid, like, oh God. But he, he was dealing with it too. And when I tell you, I got, we both got down first time we, I repented and we repented of pornography we repented of lust and that spirit because it's truly a demonic spirit yes. the enemy tries to cloak it in beauty he tries to say this is beautiful it is demonic yes. but it's more than that men don't just give into it just because it's more than that there's a demonic spirit that's waging war in the heavenly realms. We do not battle against flesh and blood. We battle against principalities and powers of darkness that are waging war in the heavenly realms. Waging war in the heavenly realms. We don't even know what's going on in the spirit right now. They're waging war. He's given us power and authority to stand. And the authority of Christ, because of the blood of Christ, to wage war with them. There is an angelic host around us. There's an angelic host around this room. There's an angelic host that has been sent out across this nation right now. Not just because of the election, because of everything. There's an angelic host. showed me that with COVID did. There was angels going up and down the East Coast. I saw it in the spirit. Never seen anything like that in my life. I was just like... Anyways, we're in here worshiping on a night that every church in this nation should be worshiping and calling down those 
strongholds, calling down any principalities and powers of darkness that wage war in the heavenly realms, especially that night. Because there, there's, been, there's been witchcraft spells, there's been demonic things spoken over the election, spoken over this nation. We don't even know the evil that goes on. We don't even know it. Thank God. Thank God we don't, we don't see it. But we speak to it. And we cast it down. We cast down those strongholds. And for the first time in my life, Pastor Jason and I have been talking about it. It's a spirit that has lurked in my life, even in my marriage. That spirit was lurking around me. I've had victories. I've had lows. My dad, the one thing my dad has always said, I've, I've always seen you go up and down, up and down. He said the Christian life is to be like this. Something shifted. Something shifted in me. Halloween 
29, 2024, something, something has shifted. Something has shifted in this church. Something has shifted in me in such a way that I, I'll never go back. So, something has shifted in a way like we're going forward. There is so much more for us, the plans that God has for us. And I'm just here to testify. I, I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for the blood of Christ. I'm thankful for the freedom and the glory that's in this place. I'm thankful for Pastor Jason and Amanda. And everybody in here who has shown me so much love. And has shown so much love to each other. God's given this place an anointing and a freedom. And really, He wants to give it to every, every body of Christ all over this nation. To move forward into His glory, into awakening, into revival. The awakening of the Lord Jesus Christ over the body of Christ. And I speak that. I thank you, Lord, for canceling every evil attack. We thank you, Lord, for canceling every evil attack of the devil. We thank you for canceling every spirit of the enemy so that we can be free so that we can freely use our giftings that you've given us, our treasures, not just keeping them to ourselves, Lord, but giving them back to you, sharing them with, with each other. Thank you for this holy moment.
people may be asking, what is Luke doing in here? He's burning for the Lord. People will get up and walk out. It's uncomfortable to them. It's uncomfortable, uncomfortable for them to experience heaven. Because it it conf conflicts with, well, I've never seen this before. This has got to be something wrong. The sad part is, is the demonic world is so comfortable to us, we don't even see the Messiah on our face. We hung him on a cross. He was right there in front of us and we nailed him. Lord, let us continue to burn for you. Um, I always encourage repentance to happen openly. This is what Luke was talking about. I told him, Luke, until you shame it publicly, it on you. And what's so beautiful about that is, is the Lord in my, one of my uh, restrooms in our house, we have three. <laughs> uh, the hall when we, my wife has put up decoration in there and there's a big sign. Many of you have been to my house before, you're gonna know it right when I say it. There's a sign and it says, break my heart, Lord, for what breaks yours. Yes. And every time I see that sign, I say, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. And the Lord told me about midweek, you're going to put that message down and you're not going to speak and you're going to stand up here in front of this church and you're going to let me move. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, I want you to repent too. I said, for what? <laughs> and this morning he told me. <clears throat> I have, as a pastor, we hear this all the time, but there's a part of leadership that if you don't confess it, it'll sabotage you. And that is dealing with anxiety. Um, and I know when I say this, some the enemy will may try to work this on some, some people, but I, I pray in Jesus' name that the assignment be canceled. I don't know how other than the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I'm able to do what I do. My wife, what a, what a precious gift. Many times I can tell gets exhausted with my complaining. I know she does. She blows up on me. She's, I'm just tired of hearing it. And it's, and then it just works on me even more. But she's, she's a beautiful filter. She lets me just get it all out. And sometimes people in the body break me. And I tell the Lord, I can't do it anymore. I can't be a good pastor to these people. I want to strangle them, Lord. But I know they're your people and you love them and you've asked me to care for them. But it comes with great anxiety sometimes and I'm being very transparent with you right now. And the ones that hurt me the most are the people that's close to me who allow their faults to run rampant in their minds. And they have no idea their actions 
what they bring upon me. If I didn't care about you, I'd be fine. I'd just worry about getting a paycheck and we'd run an hour and 15 minute service and I'd go home. But I give my life to this place. And I don't say this to shame anybody. I don't shame, say this to condemn anybody. But I understand what Jesus meant when he said, how much longer do I have to be with you for you get it? It's time for us to stop behaving as children and move on to mature things. Yes. We must transform the way we think. You must transform the way you think about church, your pastor, your brothers and sisters. And the Lord wanted me to read this. And he didn't give me any notes. And this is not my message. It's what the Lord gave me this morning. So I will be obedient to him. Colossians chapter 3. Since you have been raised to new life in me, Christ. Set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at my right hand. Think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. Let me stop right there. Think about the things of heaven and not the things on this earth. Can I tell you something? If you're worried about Pastor Jason, and what decisions I make or how I do things or how a brother and sisters offend you in this church or how you can't get a, a, a break in life. Your thought process is out of order. That's how rejection comes in. Rejection comes in when I forget to set my sights on the realities of heaven. Think about things of heaven, not things of this earth. For we died to this life. And your real life is hidden in Christ, in God. And when Christ, who is your new life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Half the room missed that. What is that saying? If you don't think about thoughts of this world of heaven, you'll miss when Jesus comes. Did you catch it? You will share in all his glory. When he comes back, it'll be glorious. And you will be able to share in that if your mind is constantly renewed on the realities of if your mind is constantly thinking about how they mistreated uh, me, how they talked to me, how I'm offended, how I didn't get to do this, why am I doing this, why am I not doing this, you're going to miss the glory. You're going to miss the glory, church. Can I tell you this? I'm here to repent to you today because I'm not going to deal with it no more. It's killing me. It's putting a wedge in my marriage. I'm not going to do it no more. And I want to tell you as your pastor how much I love you. I'm not saying you can't call me when you're going through stuff. Let me tell you what caused Pastor Jason anxiety. Not phone calls about everything going on in your life. What caused Pastor Jason anxiety is when you are a mature believer and you act like a child. That's what causes anxiety on me because in that moment there's a good chance there's going to be a loss in a relationship because you're wrapped up in offense and rejection 
And when Pastor Jay has to come and do what the Lord has asked him to do to you, and that's push you because you got comfortable, you're going to take it the wrong way. And you're going to call me a narcissist. And you're going to tell me that I'm a tyrant and a control freak. And I hate it. I hate it. I love you. I prayed this morning the same prayer that Jesus prays. Lord, don't let me lose not one more of your sheep. So, let's put to death the sinful earthly things that lurks within us. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an adulterer. Worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now, the time is to is come to get rid of all anger. Rage, malice behavior, slander, dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. So church, I'm begging you to do what the Lord says here. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know our creator and become more like him. Yes. I love you greatly. Each and every one of you. The Lord is here. He come to dwell with us today. Let's continue to become mature believers and capture those rebellious thoughts. If you're having a thought about a brother or sister in Christ that is not from heaven, capture it. Stop letting your feelings and your emotions drive you in that. Kill it. Die daily. Take the word of God breathe it into you. Let it be bread to your soul. Let it be water to you. Take his presence in you. These moments that we have here, you can do this every day. This is intimacy with him. This is what Jesus experienced daily. I'm going to say one last thing. And it's a secret to the kingdom and I'm about to give it to you. Well, how do you know it, Pastor Jason? Because God says I share my secrets with my friends. And he calls me friends. Everywhere Jesus went, without hesitation, he performed miracles except for one place. And it says he can do more. No, he did miracles, but it said he could do no more great miracles. Then Jesus finds himself up on a mountain. And as he's on the mountain, a man brings his son to the disciples. And it says this boy is demonized. It says, 
uncontrollably, this boy throw himself into a fire to kill himself. He fell to the floor convulsing. And it says something so important. It says that the disciples couldn't deliver him. They've been with Jesus for a minute. They saw his power. He's told them, do this and this will happen. Finally, Jesus comes down and he makes this statement. How long I got to be with you? He looks at the boy and, and real simple, be healed. Here comes the secret. The reason Jesus could perform miracles without hesitation wasn't because he was God. It was because he spent more time with God than he did with people. The problem with us is we spend more time with people and less time with him. That's what the bride of Christ is called to do. More of him and less of us. This is why his cousin, John the Baptist, called it. I'm just honored to stand there with the bride in the groom. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. I want everybody to bow your heads. I want you to ask God the very thing that David asked. Search me, O oh God. Reveal my anxious thoughts. Jesus. Here come your freedom. It's on you now, buddy. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else need freedom? Oh, there's a hunger one coming. 
Stand right here, lift your hands. Oh, you smell like oil. Go ahead and burn for it. Thank you, Lord. Stay right there and just stay worshiping with him. Thank you, Lord. Let's come stand behind her. The Lord's been here. Thank you, Lord. Yep, here it comes. Be free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, come here. You still bound. I felt it. There's something else. What else? Lift your hands. He's already searching you. Thank you, Lord. Unforgiveness. You're going to have to let them go. Burn for it. Renounce them. Say their name. Shame it publicly. No, no. Who, who, who in your life do you harbor? Who hurt you? Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. That's what's got you held up. You're getting ready to burn for it. Say his name and say, Lord, I give him to you. All the hurt. Here he comes. Whenever you're ready. Go ahead. All the hurt. All the pain. The anger. The resentment, all of it. And look to Jesus. Say, I need you, Lord. All of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is not fake. I dare you to come up here and feel it. Anybody else? Michelle and I have a child that would like to stay in the gap for <coughs> Yes, sir. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have a uh, 24 year old that is lost. Um, only God is going to be able to reach him. That's it. You know, it's, he's not in a place where. sort of help, advice, you know, I mean, he's 24, he knows, he knows, he knows everything, he knows, he knows everything. we come against the spirit of pride in Jesus' name, yes. well, which, which son is this, Peyton, Peyton's in trouble, you know why Peyton's in trouble, because he's got a praying mama, I know is God answers Michelle's prayers. Yeah. <laughs> You're a product of that. He, lo he loves her. Every time she prays, I see tears coming down his face. Stretch your hand, church. In the body of Christ. 
cross said, let it be so. So. Okay, I hear the Lord speaking to me to tell you, was my hand ever short to you? It won't be short to you now. He's coming home. Just continue to stand. And I'm telling you, her prayers have already been answered. They've already been answered. You just may not see it yet. But it's coming. Amen. Praise God. Christopher. Lord, we ask that the spirit of pride fall off of him. And Lord, he learned to come home, Lord, and get on his knees and change his crooked ways, Lord. Because you are coming back. You are coming back, Lord. Because your bride has been hollering Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. <coughs> Thank you Lord. Anyone else need prayer for anything? Come on Greg. The Lord loves you brother. You want to renounce anxiety? Praise the Lord. Lift your hands to him. Let me tell you something, church. Here's how you know Jesus is in the room. Open repentance. We break the spirit of anxiety. We break it. In the name of Jesus, set him free, Lord. Set him free, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Greg, take a deep breath. Say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. What's happening, Greg? Yes. Freedom. You feel a lot, don't you? Now let the joy of the Lord hit. Yes. More joy. More joy. More joy. Embrace it, Greg. It's coming. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It has been lifted off of you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? it at the root and tell it to wither and die in the name of Jesus. Set him free, Lord. Set him free, Lord. Stay right there. The Lord just spoke to me.
It's not for you to say publicly. We repent, Lord. Bring us back into your alignment. In the mighty name of Jesus. saying that. I love Courtney. I love Courtney. That's what I keep hearing the Lord say in my spirit. I love Courtney. Don't ever question that. Don't ever question it. He loves you. to that prodigal child and tell her to come home in Jesus name yes. you'll see it Miss Belma you'll see it thank you Lord thank you Lord <laughs> Oh, I just heard the Lord say something crazy to me again, Jennifer. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're ready. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody else who's tired in here? You're weary? Stand up, young lady. Brother Joe, lock our arms with your bride. I know you are. Jesus said, come to me, Joe and Tammy, when you're tired, and I will give you rest. Isaiah 40, we read at the beginning of the service, says what? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So right now, y'all stretch your hand towards our brother and sister. Let's all be in agreement and speak rest in Jesus' name. In their mind. In their body. Okay. This has something to do with a child. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Joe and Tammy, regardless of what their <coughs> flesh and Satan tells them, have been good parents. Yes, God. Yes, God. And you have found them worthy. I hear, I'm, I'm telling you what the Lord's saying to me right now. I have found them worthy. But the enemy has tried to come in 
and tell them, because your children haven't behaved the way you intended for them, you're a failure. It's caused some turmoil in your marriage. Lord, the Lord says he's going to heal it. And I'm not saying that to be feel good. I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you will come true. Tammy, I'm going to talk to about. I'm going to talk to you about them for a second. Joe and Tammy are faithful to this body. They love our children better than I think you do. I'm just, I'm just stating facts. They have servanthood down. Because Jesus told his disciples, if you want to be the greatest, be a servant. You will receive the honor's reward. Because what did Jesus say? Do not stop the little ones from coming to me. I have two little girls. And they always tell me, every time Joe and Tammy's there, they tell me about all of them, actually. But I walked through that door one day during service, and I looked at that door, and I saw Joe on the ground playing with them kids. <laughs> and Miss Tammy was doing what she always does. She's just working. spoke to me and I never told y'all this the Lord spoke to me and told me this is how much I love the kids I give them one of my best <laughs> how many people will get down in the floor and play with kids on a Sunday morning none of y'all will but a few about four or five of y'all you know how I know this because don't nobody sign up but the four or five that's in here <laughs> Joe and Tammy, I want to tell y'all something. And I pray it ministers to you. I am a product of children's ministry. You have no idea who you're telling about Jesus. They'll grow up and change this world. I can remember being 11 years old. It's so vivid to me. And getting on my knees and saying, Jesus, I want you to be Lord. That happened in children's ministry. And I remember my children's pastor well. He's gone to be with the Lord. Eternal impact, Joe and Tammy. Thank you, Lord. Rest is coming to you. It is the reward. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to publicly cancel any assignment <coughs> that the enemy may have said to cause division with any person, with anybody in this room. We will not lose another sheep. We will not have division 
in this body. We will be one. We will be united. And we will burn for him. And people will hear about the burn. And they'll come. You know, that's what happened with Jesus. He just got up on a hill and started burning. And thousands came. I could care less how many numbers we have. All I care about is, is we burn for him. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? What you have, brother? I just need, I need to cancel any anxiety. Any anxiety in this room, on myself, or in this room of anybody. Um, any anxiety must go in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Jesus name. No, if, if any anxiety came in this service or even any, if, with anything that happened, I just cancel anxiety because I, I started feeling it. So Father God, we cancel any anxiety on every single one of us. Yes. In this room, we cancel any anxiety because we're we're all we're leaders. Yes. So the enemy will attack you with that. Thank you, Lord. Emily, come pray for us.
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the Lamb. 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 Worthy of our time is the Lamb. Worthy of our sacrifice is the Lamb. Worthy of our burning flesh is the Lamb. Worthy of our yes is the Lamb. Worthy is the King of Kings. Worthy, 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 worthy.
bless every single penny that comes into their bank account, Lord. I pray that you make them fruitful, that they will go forth and multiply as you have commanded them, God. I thank you, Lord God, that they walk in humility and authenticity. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that they leave room for you.
He's good to his church. I don't think y'all heard it. He's good to us. Yes. Now the best time of service where the pastor asks for your money. No. That's what people think. It's time for us to continue in our worship. Where we have the opportunity to bring to our King what he has blessed us with. We try to make it easy. Three ways. You can go online, greatoatschurch.net. You can come up here and give it to the basket. Or you can text to give. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this church. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the resources are going to continue to come in for our learning center. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we will not be a church that is lack. Lord, we will have everything that we need. I thank you, Lord, that you are blessing your people so that they can be outrageously generous. Because that's what you called your sons and daughters to be, outrageously generous. Not just to give to the church, but just be generous outside these four walls. So, Lord, we just take on the mindset of the kingdom. Yes. And we divorce the mindset of this world. Yes. Because Jesus told us, you hoard all these things in this earth and the moth will eat it. Instead, store them in heaven. So, Lord, we're storing up. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's come give. contributed to that but I also would like to thank if you helped out and volunteered in any kind of way for that can you just stand up stand up can we just honor these people thank y'all for your hard work thank you for what you did thank you so much I'm going to bless you before we leave, okay? Lord, I pray right now that the blood of Jesus cover every person in this room. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that they'll be blessed in this city and they'll be blessed in their fields. Lord, I thank you they'll be blessed on their jobs. They'll be blessed in the conversations that they have because they'll be fruitful conversations and not slanderous conversations. I thank you, Lord, right now that we will go on from childish behavior. We will continue to renew our mind and we will capture every thought that is not of heaven. And I thank you, Lord, that this body continues to grow. You give them healing in their bodies, Lord. You unite uh, family, Lord, especially at this time of year, Lord. Bring family together, Lord. Let us lay down our weapons and let us pick up a towel and wash feet. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you for that mindset. In your name we pray and the body said, Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Have a good day.